Hello and welcome to the Six Degrees of Feature Film podcast. I am Mankind, also known as Brianne, also known as Miss Movies. And I am Dickie, also known as Stacey Howard. I just like the name Dickie because I think it's kind of dirty. <laughs> and uh, we have a guest today on our show for Six Degrees of Feature Film, which you can see right in the middle of us, and that hey, is... I'm Roberto Duran, a.k.a. Gabriel Gonzalez, a.k.a. Double G on TV, I guess. Hey! How are you guys doing? Hey! Yeah. Doing good. Thanks for coming, buddy. Yeah, yeah thank you thanks guys. for coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Gabriel. Okay, so a lot of people probably know me from doing the UFC podcast at AfterBuzz TV. I'm a staff writer at CagePages.com, so I provide content for their site regarding the UFC, all things MMA. So a lot of my followers really know me for that. And yeah, I've been following MMA for several years. I've also covered the NBA for two seasons. But um, yeah, MMA has always been my passion, and that's what a lot of people know me for is following the sport and just uh, providing content. Nice. Now I do have some questions. Sure. Uh, because there is a big UFC event coming up. What can you yeah. tell us about that event? What number is it? When is right. it happening? What's going on? Who's in it? <laughs> there is some crazy matches going to be happening. Right. Yes. I love that she's <laughs> trying to sound like an announcer. I am. Oh, right I've now. watched too much. I think she's doing a great <laughs> job. I've watched too many documentaries. You're doing a great job. You got to build it. It's got to no. build. Yeah, Gonna well, get I too excited and loud in here, you guys. You will never <laughs> know how excited we are. Oh, I love it. I love it. All Just, right. you know, I'm so used to like having such a bigger desk. So now being here, it's like, hey, I like it. Hey, cool. You know what? The big <laughs> event everyone's waiting for is obviously UFC 207 at the end of December on the 30th. Because it, okay. um, it's so special Friday night show. But yeah, everyone's excited because it's the return of Ronda Rousey. Oh. She's coming back. She's going to try to reclaim the belt she lost last year against current champion Amanda Nunes. Mm -hmm. And this one, everybody is just waiting to see what will Ronda Rousey look like when she comes back. Is she still going to be, you know, afraid to take a punch? Is she mm -hmm. going to come in disciplined? Is she going to come in in great shape? Reports are saying Ronda Rousey looks just shredded right now. I'm so sure. I think, yeah, so I think mm -hmm. fans, yeah. they're really looking forward to that. They got She's got something to prove. She is yes. Creed in Rocky 2. Yeah. She's like, yes. I am coming back. I am going to take down Rocky, even though that didn't happen. Uh, spoiler. <laughs> uh, but definitely like has that I am I am going to kill this person. Whoever, I thought she was gonna be, be more like Rocky in Rocky 3, where she loses the title and wins it back after well, being knocked okay, out back. Okay, okay. There you go. Hey, there's, I mean, there's so many Rocky moments that we could talk about. Right? <laughs> we could. Okay. Okay. Uh, for for the layman, for the person that's not into um, that entire world, which is, I mean, there's so much going on there. Yes. What happened with Rousey last year? She got like kicked in the head or something, right? She yeah. lost her title. It was like supposed to be a, an embarrassing moment or like she was like she was defeated. No one yes. thought that that was going to happen. And then it was a total shock. So this is going to be her big comeback. Like, I'm not going to let that bring me down. That's not how I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out fighting. Definitely. Well, the big question, obviously, what's her performance going to be like? You mm -hmm. know, so we want to know, is Rousey mentally, you know, recovered from that? Mm -hmm. And the big storylines I actually think going on with Ronda are outside the cage. Okay. Since then, she's had so many issues with the media and fans. She's been so closed off and mm -hmm. she's like, she's made statements like she felt like personally attacked, like the mm -hmm. public turned on her. Uh -huh. That's why we haven't seen her so She's lately, she went on Ellen. She said, it might be one of my last fights, win or mm -hmm. lose. Mm -hmm. So that says, for as in shape and prepared as I think she's going to be on Saturday, well, not this Saturday, but at the end of the year, I think it's more bigger question going forward, exactly how much fire does Ronda still have? Because she has so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this fight, she has something to prove. I think for ego, I think just that is going to be all right mm -hmm. but exactly how much does she want to commit to the fight game that's the question i think everybody really wants to know because she is such a transcendent star mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm excited for it and uh she definitely is a star she's gonna maybe be in some movies uh, i don't know about few, that she's been in like two big she movies. has yes. but not like leading those movies and that with the Isn't whole she like gonna be roadhouse, roadhouse not, who knows roadhouse who knows, who knows? that is mm -hmm. on the uh periphery at this moment um but I uh, I know that evening I am going to be at a party, and so that's that's frustrating. Oh. That means I'm probably going to watch it illegally on Periscope. Wait, when <laughs> is... wait, no, no, I'm not. When, when, it's, when is it? It's going to be at the end of the year. It's a special Friday night because if I'm not yeah. mistaken, 
New Year's Eve falls on a Saturday, which is the typical pay-per-view night. So mm. that one's okay, actually yeah. going to be on a Friday, which is very unusual. Okay. Mm. My, I would like to just disconnect from social media, purchase it, come home and watch it after that party if I can. I got to say, I think that's easily the most frustrating thing for fight fans when like they know they can't catch it and then <laughs> you got to avoid Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. Instagram, yes. your and Snapchat. And that's the fun part. The fun part yes. is like interacting with people that are watching it live with you. Exactly. And so, so that's like, what you miss. Like I can't even turn on my phone. I just have to like come home, find it on the DVR mm-hmm. and be like, just enjoy it then. And then even I can't even just go do not disturb because it's right. still your phone. You know, it's getting texts and mm-hmm. it's like, did you see that? What are we going to talk about uh, tomorrow at work? And I'm like, guys, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> just wait, just wait. Yes. But this show is How not actually about UFC. Nah. Right. Um, nah. This show is about movies. Yeah. So let's get into how this show works. This is called Six Degrees of Feature Film. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we see you in the chat. Hey, Randall Sands and hey. Jack Shipley. And hey. I think that's all I see right now. Um, but... What we do on this show is we take one film and we show how six other films link up to it in some random way, shape, or form uh, to be talking about a total of seven films. And our feature film for today is Warrior. Warrior. So, hey, we're talking a little bit more about UFC, which is why I wore my Rockhold shirt, even though his last fight did not go well. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know who you or at least his about. last title fight I should you say know, I gotta go say well. this I think he is definitely on the short list he unfortunately had an injury he was gonna fight mm-hmm. la- at right. the end of last month but um I say stand by him because he is still sure. gonna be a big player in that division this is the only shirt that I own so, so I'm good. standing by it um I did like the gentleman who took him out though I don't remember his Michael name Michael Bisping yes, yes. Yeah. and I love um I ended up watching like if you have Apple TV um or probably Amazon Fire I'm not sure if you have those services, you can watch for free the UFC, some of the UFC stuff on their little channel there. And so I was able to watch like beginning, like what's going to leading up to the event. And so I liked watching the stuff of them at their own oh. homes and things. And like his no. son, like ha- does he not believe in him at all. He everything. always does that. And I'll tell you this though, th- that's a guy, you know, I've got the pleasure of talking to Michael. He's easily one of the nicest guys. It was a big upset, but it's a guy who's been plugging away. So he is, even nicer in person than he is in all those be- behind the scenes. Nice. I can speak to that. Um, so Warrior came sure. out September 9th, 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the youngest son of an alcoholic former boxer returns home where he's trained by his father for competition in a mixed martial arts tournament, a path that puts the fighter on a collision course with his estranged older brother. Um I was a little disappointed. This is the first time I watched it was just a few days ago. Mm-hmm. I was a little disappointed that the image that you see when you pull up the movie is like the ending. Yeah. I was like, okay. But then my husband was saying to me, come on, Brianne, like you have these two fighters and there's brothers. There's go- they're going to meet in the ring. What were yeah. you expecting? I was yeah. like, you're right. What was I expecting? Maybe something different. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe to be surprised by that. I'm not sure. Well, but I wasn't. Did you watch the trailer, the though? Did you watch the trailer? I didn't watch the trailer. Because in I the trailer, I, I can't remember the trailer. It's been a few years since I saw it. But I feel like you see them fighting in the trailer. Probably. So, yeah. But I was just surprised that we would just go right to that. That's like, hey, okay. Because mm-hmm. you're then you're just waiting. Like, as a moviegoer, you're just waiting for, I'm la- waiting for this image to pop up. When's right. it going to pop up? Mm-hmm. Sure. And that sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just saw whatever the cover the cover art of it, let's say on the DVD or whatever, is different. It's not the same as the image that comes up when you bring it up on Apple TV but, or Amazon. Yeah, I think one of the promotional pictures was their split, you know, with yeah. Brandon yes. and Tommy, you know, and they're both on the side of the warrior going down mm-hmm. the middle. They look. It looks like a, a fight promo poster. Exactly. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. This is directed by Gavin O'Connor, also written by Gavin O'Connor and Anthony Timbakis. Mm-hmm. I will, uh, hopefully I said that correctly. Mm-hmm. Starring Tom Hardy, Joel Edgerton, Nick Nolte, Jennifer Morrison, Frank Grillo. It was made for $25 million and it only grossed $23.1 mm-hmm. at the box office. So a little bit of a bomb yes. there. But did get an Oscar nomination for Nick Nolte, right. who I thought was excellent in this. Now, Stacey, do you feel like um, Nick Nolte and Gary Busey look alike? <laughs> they do. They do. You know, I wanted to talk about Nick Nolte's character in okay, this movie Patty. actually for a second. Patty. So obviously Nick Nolte, I feel like this movie was kind of his comeback. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a, a serious actor for a while. Obviously, he's always been, always been a great performer. He's had some demons 
in real yes. life, let's say. And I feel like this movie was him proving, you know, I went through the shit, you know, I am, you know, have a little bit going on in my personal life, but I can still bring into the performance. And apparently, you know, he had like a scene in a diner that was actually cut out, but like the entire crew stood up and applauded for him after he finished. He brings so much to this role. I will say though, okay, the the reasons that he was so tormented in his life in this role, I feel like they introduced too late. Like I, I feel like it was kind of an sure. afterthought versus they really set that foundation and kind of had little hints to it throughout the movie. So he had his breakdown in the hotel room where he's crying and thinks that he's still on the ship with yes. his, you know, back when Moby he was like Dick. in the military yes. uh, or something like that. And I was yeah. like, I feel like that was like tacked on versus really mm. well established. Well, so because he's trying the entire film, you know, he's trying to be the dad that he wasn't. Right. And he's trying not to give in to the urges of alcoholism. So right. I feel like it's not necessarily tacked on, but that's mm. the natural progression of an alcoholic that is right. trying to not be one. Right. So I, think, I don't know. When I think mm. about Nick Nolte's character, and uh, I get what you mean, and I feel like it was introduced not necessarily to help out Nick Nolte's as much as to help build the character of Tommy as a more well-rounded character, show like a soft side mm -hmm. so that, you know, when you get to the end, you're really tormented about, well, who needs it more? Who do you really want right. to see win after they're both conquering these demons? Mm -hmm. I was Joel Edgerton all the way. All, oh, the, sure. all day. Who doesn't all love day. a cute little okay. teacher? Now Come listen, on. Come on. here's my issue. I first knew Joel Edgerton from The Gift. That mm -hmm. was like the first time I saw him. What? Super, super creepy. And then I was like, oh, Joel Edgerton's in this movie, what? And then I like see him, I was like, oh my God, who yeah. is this? What is happening right now? Why am I not seeing this Joel Edgerton regularly in real life? Well, Joel Edgerton, <laughs> I've known him for a while. He's, he's been in such he's a been chameleon. In lots of movie, movies, but like, I remember The Gift, didn't he write it and direct yes. it or something? But I, he's in this great, uh, he's like a, a director and producer. He actually produces a lot of films in his home country of Australia. Mm -hmm. He did a movie called Felony with Tom Wilkinson and Jai Courtney, who actually gives a surprisingly great dramatic performance in that one. Very understated. And um, he, so he is a true artist, a true craftsman when it comes to filmmaking. So I know in this movie, he's like big and buff. He's done like action movies. He, he's, he's had a quite a wide range, but I feel like he is more of an artist and a creator versus like this action movie, like, um, right. superstar. You know what I mean? He's not the Tom Cruise. He's like no. Ron Howard. He's like the creator of stuff. He's, he's the super artist. Artistic. Yeah. He's absolutely an artist. He doesn't look it, but he is one. So just those, for those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with his, with his, um, career path and his work, Google him, IMDb search him. He's actually been involved in some producer or writer way in like most of his projects. So he's, he's absolutely an artist. So he's, he, he looks big and tough, but he's like a gentle giant. I think he's a sensitive yeah, it one. was really hard for me to start with the gift and then see yeah, him in this <laughs> because he's just so creepy. I can't believe that's the first movie you saw with him in it. I, I mean, maybe he's been in other things that oh, I've yeah. seen, but just didn't, didn't recognize. Yeah. Attention. Didn't, didn't say like, Oh, this is Joel Edgerton. Mm -hmm. This is who this is. You know what I'm saying? Cause he very much like can blend with the background and like give an excellent yeah, performance. Every man kind of looks yes. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. just going to make sure you get that close oh, to you. Apologies. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> she has to do that to me. Five I times do every episode, pretty so. much like, oh, yeah. I wave my hand to talk about the mummy. She breathes. Yeah. <laughs> Jose, Julio, mouth. how do you feel about Stacy not putting the mic up to her mouth? Because I want to know, <sighs> um, do Sorry, I need guys. to constantly remind her all the and time? I do want to say time. funny. Because someone said kinda. Mm -hmm. I gotta kinda go with funny. kinda. See, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I'm so used to like having this set up on the desk. I never have the microphone in my hand, so it's a new feeling for me. It is. <laughs> it's so easy right? to just wander and just bring it back. <laughs> bring it back, you guys. Always bring always bring it back to center. Right. Ever the professional Brianne is. I you know, I I give it a try. Mm -hmm. I guess like uh Brendan Conlon uh was loosely based on a real life. UFC fighter Rich yes. Ace Franklin. Yes. And very, you know this man? Yeah, very personally. He, Rich was very not personally. Um, you know, he's uh, you know, very great with the media, but he's more known for being one of the key characters, the story that hey, he was the math teacher and then he went on to win the world title in the UFC. That was big when the sport it. was really it. trying to grow like it's not barbaric. We have these real people with, you know, everyday people, it's just this is their passion for the sport. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, what I really love about Warrior and um, by the way, the staff at CagePages.com absolutely said you got to mention that movie. So I'm so glad we're focusing on it. 
they did so much commitment to actually portraying the MMA world correctly. You know, mm -hmm. the choreography, it wasn't overdone. And if you're following the sport, especially the grappling scenes, very on point. All the actors, you could tell they really committed to training. And right. that's something I think fans really appreciated. Mm -hmm. And just, yeah, the storylines, if you follow MMA, they pulled so much interesting stuff and they tied it together very well. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the really key points. I know Warrior, as uh, far as, you know, big money and budget and, you know, popularity, it didn't really take off. But fans who know it, I think they really appreciated the work that was brought into that film. I yeah. like that you talked about kind of the the actors having that camaraderie and kind of brotherhood yes. on set. They actually all ended up living together for several weeks. Yes. So I think um, Tom Hardy like showed up on the director's doorstep when he was supposed to like fly in, got in at midnight and was supposed to go to a hotel, but he showed up uh, right to the director. Uh, that was Thompson before was like, his audition. Yeah. Um, he was like, oh, by the way, like, I'm going to listen. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm <laughs> staying with you. We're going to do this shit. We're in it together. And they all ended up living and training together. And it, and it, it reminded me a lot of, um, like, I remember watching Foxcatcher and how all those guys, like, lived and trained together. They really were a family and a unit together. And I liked that when I was reading about the background of this film and the backstory to it, it kind of seemed like that same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. anytime you see kind of a, a male athletic sport uh, film, I feel like the actors truly get into character by also becoming super, super close in real yeah. life and in training together and suffering through the pain together. So I liked that aspect of this movie too. One part that I feel like they missed the mark is they should have cast Joe Rogan as one of the commentators. Yes, and the probably. guy kind of looks a little bit like Joe yes. Rogan. Oh yeah. And I was like, you just should have gotten Joe Rogan. Yes. Like what, why are we doing this right now? <laughs> you know, and I think that um, quite frankly, I think it's different doing your job for the film, like, because they've had Joe Rogan, you know, play that part before. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I think it actually takes away from the realism of it. Mm. And because even they've had a, they have several UFC guys. Um, if you remember uh, Brendan's first opponent, Midnight, who that's the first time he shocks everyone. That guy, he is still a top level UFC guy. He was supposed to fight for the title this Saturday. But I think that the fact that they didn't use that, they didn't overdo it with trying to pull in these real life aspects i think mm -hmm. that lended to the experience of putting yourself in that world whereas if you really did see joe rogan i think you know you would have st suddenly started associating you know he's got comedy he's got this and that For sure whereas the character that they had i think it worked better personally the, but if they didn't want that then they shouldn't have cast someone that looks pretty much like him in my yeah, in my opinion yeah. but that's my opinion all right we're going to have to move on to our oh, next okay, okay. movies. Okay. So we started with Warrior, and now we're going to go on to movies that have the main character is a professional fighter. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to talk first about the fighter. So yeah. there you go. Ding, ding, ding. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> um, and this came out December 17th, 2010. It's a look at the early years of boxer Irish Mickey Ward and his brother who helped him train before going pro in the mid 1980s, directed by David O. Russell, written by Scott Silver and Paul Tomasi. Starring Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale, Amy Adams, Melissa Leo, Jack McGee. This won Best Supporting Actor for Christian Bale as well as Best Supporting Actress for Melissa Leo. Mm -hmm. It was also nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Supporting Actress for Adams, uh, film editing and original screenplay. The budget was twenty-five million. Hey, twenty-five million. That's kind of like the hot spot here. Yeah. And the box office did a one hundred and twenty-nine point two million. So not bad. Not, not bad. bad at all. For a it's all that film. Christmas money. Yeah, <laughs> we're just throwing yeah. that around. You know what I loved about this film? Uh, now I'm not a sports gal. I'm not into, uh, you know, I'm not into professional sports. I'm into like race car driving or boxing or anything like that. But movies like this that are so well made and so just like, kind of encapsulate the subject mm -hmm. are truly great because I don't care about that, but I care about the people in this movie. And I, yes. I care about the subject of this movie. Like Rush, I don't care anything about race car driving. I loved Rush. I was super, super into the characters. I don't care a lick about boxing. I've never watched it voluntarily in my <gasps> life, nor do I follow it, but I loved this film. So if you can take someone like me, a complete layman who has, 
I mean, no emotional attachment to the subject and make mm -hmm. me care about that. That is an accomplishment. That's a great film right there. That's good filmmaking and good acting. I agree. So it's a good egg. I like it a lot. No, I mean, one of the things I really think just fans appreciate from the fighters that, you know, I mean, Rocky just celebrated 40th mm -hmm. anniversary it's and so everyone amazing. knows that. And yes, it did kind of open up that genre for the mainstream mm -hmm. boxing mm -hmm. movies, fight movies. But it almost by now feels overdone. It's like, oh, they're leading up to the epic fight that you just don't believe. And um, even though some fights are like that, but I think that, you know, they focus so much more on the character, the story, and you have these great dramatic actors building it. And it's not, you know, the background of the boxing world is really just like part of the setting. And I think that's what helps lend it to it. Whereas, you know, you're trying to shove the boxing in the face. I think that's why The Fighter was so popular with so many people. Because it's mm -hmm. like, it's a world you think you know, but these characters you just didn't before the movie. And mm -hmm. I think that's what worked for it. I like that you mentioned characters. His sisters and his mom were the best part of this movie they were. for me. They were. And they did not like this film. Yes. The real life ones. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. The they real, were upset about it. They yelled at David O. Russell at the screening. <laughs> I'm sure there was a lot of colorful words. Which is hilarious because that's exactly right. how yeah, those characters exactly act. act. <laughs> they were completely maybe truly. Maybe they were just upset at looking at a mirror. Yeah. yeah. They were no like, that's not who me. I am. Like, I am how not dare that you. Stop. you. I'm not like that. <laughs> I don't yell and curse like you. Oh, that is so well done. Uh, <laughs> Melissa, Leo, Christian Bale, and Mark Wahlberg would stay in character the entire time um, on set and... Uh, Melissa Leo, the the real life woman. Yeah. What's her name? Sorry, I don't. I actually don't know. I gotta what find her, like, it. Real life, real life. <laughs> name is. The Declans. Uh, one, yeah, one of the Declans yeah. that I Cookie, whatever her name is. Yes. Um, um, confronted Melissa Leo and was like, "You, I don't act like that. How fucking dare you do this?" And then Melissa Leo stayed in character and like argued with her about it. <laughs> I would have loved oh. to fly on the wall and see that entire interaction. It would have been in. Incredible. Sometimes I wonder why are people invited on set? Yeah, I'm like, why, why, why are, are they there? Here? That's inappropriate. <laughs> Get out. Of course, don't do that. If they're portraying the most dramatic moments of your life and you know how you had like heartbreak yeah. and you know, struggles and everything, don't maybe don't be on set that day. Maybe just right. come to the day where they're doing like a celebratory thing. Have some champagne, have some cake. Yeah. You know. How much did you sell the rights to this story for? Yeah. Let me just ask you that question before right. we get into all these logistics. Yeah. Yeah. How much <laughs> you count, yeah. Count your pennies over there. Count your fucking pennies over there. <laughs> Cheap <laughs> bastard. Cheap <laughs> motherfucker. I love Amy Adams in this movie too. She just had steak and potatoes and drank beer and was just like a real woman in this. She said she was like, yeah. all the men had to go on diets and, you know, work out and all that. And she was just like, no, I'm going to Arby's. This is great. Going to yeah. Arby's. Mm -hmm. And she, actually, the girl that she portrayed was like, I don't really dress like that. Yeah. That's the one thing that yeah. I'd be like, she was okay, like, okay, you know, I get you, girl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, they kind of sexualized her. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for those other people to say that they aren't portrayed that way in the way that they handled saying yeah. that um, <laughs> is hilarious. I don't fucking act like that. <laughs> Fuck you. That's great. That's beautiful. That's brilliant. Yeah. I, I love it. I do got to say my it. favorite lines when they're interacting with, um, you know, Amy Adams characters, when they say it's like, I heard she's one of those MTV girls. And, yeah. And then she's <laughs> like, MTV, MTV girls. Girl? It's like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah. And then it's like, that is hilarious. <laughs> I laugh every time when I see that part. Stop calling me MTV girl. What does that mean? Yeah, you go to college. Mm -hmm. Right. I <laughs> she only worked for two years. She got kicked out. I remember that. So I, I love it. I laughed so hard at that. That was just perfect. Fucking MTV girl. <laughs> I love it. I would have loved to have been one of those sisters. Like, not have a line, but just be there mm. and just be able to be on set. I would right. just dress with the hair. Oh, their outfits were on point. Like, everything was so white, trash, and beautiful. It reminded me <laughs> of home. As some of you know, I need am some from white Texas. leather, some fringe, yeah, some, some sequins. Yep, yeah. There we and go. I realize the movie is not set in Texas, but I'm just saying that that level of um, not classiness, let's say, I really appreciate it and can completely relate to. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great. Sure. I love it. Uh, Mark Wahlberg started training for this back in 2005 to get ready for this movie. And uh, is the reason that Christian Bale was cast because I guess their kids go to the same elementary school and he was oh, like, wow. hey, doing this movie, I think you'd be good for this other part. Let's do it. It'd be wicked awesome. <laughs> I don't talk like that. I want to see them dropping their kids off, you know, and then they're just standing there like, hey, so uh, want to come do this movie with me? I think you'd be really good. I wish I could do a Mark Wahlberg impression and or impressions of anyone, really. 
wait, what, isn't there an SNL skit? He's like, now I want to talk to a chicken. <laughs> What's up, chicken? Are you going to probably want to start something? And then he walks in. I'm pretty sure. That, that is a good one. I, I just yeah, can't imagine, one. like, you know, they drop their kids off and then, like, you see them in, like, their sweatpants and fleece, like, jogging in the morning. Like, oh, really? Those nineties yeah, yeah, yeah. Adidas sweatsuits. Yeah. Kind of sleepy, there rolling goes, up in the black. goes Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale just running after dropping off their kids. Oh, hey, hey, man! Yeah, you heard. Uh, we got that science project coming up. You gonna help her out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, bro. And then it's like Batman. Christian the last Bale's thing voice. I want to say about this movie, and then we can give our final thoughts, and then we'll okay. move on. Is both Catherine Hardwick and Lexi Alexander wanted to direct the movie and were refused a meeting with the producers because they did not want a woman to direct. So to those producers, mm. I say, fuck you. Mm. That is all. <laughs> yeah, no, it's bullshit. I, I think you know, I gotta just really praise Mark Wahlberg. He really did commit to the role, and um, mm. he became he was a big boxing guy, but he became very well known at the Wild Card Gym run by Freddie Roach, who trains Manny Pacquiao. And um, I think Christian Bale, like when you ha- cast him, everyone this is in the midst of him doing the Batman movies. So mm-hmm. you hear about him. He bulks up, obviously, to do that role. Then he plays a crackhead and he's losing all this weight. And it's still, you know, just that commitment to the performance. I think it just made it a great film. For sure. For sure. Agree. Any final thoughts, Stacey? Um, I just really want some of that cake they were eating in <laughs> okay. the film. And he <laughs> okay. has the yes. blue icing all over his uh-huh. elbow. The fuck, Donny Apo? It's icing. <laughs> I just lo- I love all the female characters in this movie. I think they really drove it. They're the ones that put the heart and the drama into it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the relationship with the brothers was super important, and that's the center of the film. But to make it more realistic and more family oriented, you needed those female characters. You know, the wife, uh, the mom, the sisters. Everyone just kind of brought a realness to it. Versus it just being like a couple a couple of bros at a boxing gym, you I know. So and nothing against yeah. movies like that, but I think you need that balance to bring bring a realness to the film. I think that's so great because if I think without the female characters, you just would not have cared about the journey of the brothers as exactly. much. Right. And yeah. you know, yeah. you really can't have one without the other, despite the fact that it is a boxing movie and they're mm-hmm. the stars of it. Right, right, because you get to see how their life and their sport affects everyone else around them and the people around them are the ones that the the audience can relate to because most of the people watching this film are not going to be boxers they're going to be you know brothers sisters sons daughters whatever so for sure dogs Mm -hmm. cats dogs cats you know living together turtles that's (laughs) chaos cuff and link all right (laughs) so we're gonna go on now we did warrior then we went to movies where a professional fighter is the lead character um, that's not Rocky. And we went with the fighter. And now we're going to go over to Beyond the Mat, yeah. which first came out in 1999, but was officially released March 17th, 2000. Mm-hmm. It's a heartfelt documentary focusing on the lives of professional wrestlers and how their sport is not fake. It's not fake. Yeah. Directed and narrative written by Barry W. Blostein. Um, starring Terry Funk, Jake the Snake Roberts, Mick Mankind Foley, as well as appearances from The Rock. Now, what's interesting well, is um, if you look at it now, the like picture that comes up, The Rock is like featured predominantly. Yeah, and he's like in, in the movie, seconds. he's like, yeah, yes, maybe <laughs> a few minutes, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, the budget for this was five hundred thousand, and it at the box office made two million and yeah. fifty three thousand. So so good job. Good job nice. on that. I know nice. Vince McMahon uh didn't really like this documentary and doesn't mm-hmm. really promote it, um, even though he's in it. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, he was upset that neither he nor his company received any compensation after the film's success at the box office, mm-hmm. as he had been led to believe that it was a non commercial independent film. Mm-hmm. McMahon subsequently refused to promote the movie, even going so far as to ban the film's trailers from airing during commercial breaks of his WWE Raw 1993 broadcasts. And why does it say 1993? That's because that's when WWE Raw first came out. So okay. in 1999 slash 2000 is when. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Which kind of sucks um, because like, what were they expecting? You know, I think and this- like, was that in any, did he, sign anything that said oh yeah. you'll get compensated if it's 
commercial. Like I, yeah. I think maybe that's a ball was dropped by I Vince. Feel like that might be an after greedy. the fact, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of thing. Because it's like, okay, if you're gonna portray this sport like this, at least I, we better be getting a cut of it if you want our backing. Mm-hmm. But it's like, so you don't really profit off of it, and you have this film that might change the perception for pro wrestling fans. Maybe not, you know, be as invested when you see what they go through. Okay, you know, like I kind of get that from a business standpoint, but at the same time, yeah. you're in the film. You should, you know, it's it feels like common sense to know what was coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I have Vince. Yeah. Oh, you I made guess, money. I should get some of that money. <laughs> I guess I thought it was going to be more of like a behind the scenes thing of WWE, or as it was known back then, WWF. Yeah. Um, but really, it is a look at wrestlers at fighters Mm -hmm. uh in general and how it affects their lives and it's more about the underground scene and all the men that are trying to you know break their way into or come back to their former glory and it was super heartbreaking like this film it made me want to watch the wrestler again because now i realize that that is based completely has to be based off of a real character in these in these real people's real lives which one do you think uh probably jake the snake yeah. Yeah. It's got, I mean, you know, the, what the relationship he has with his daughter, the estranged mm-hmm. relationship, I should say, with his daughter and his family, um, struggling with trying to make ends meet while still supporting your career as a fighter and not getting paid at all, not getting compensated at all, but still doing mm-hmm. it just for the glory, just for those you know, five minutes of fame while the crowd's cheering your name. And at the end of the day, as they said, you just go back to your ho- hotel room and take a shower and drive on to the next gig. Like yeah. there's nothing, there's no lasting effects to it. It's just, the highs and the lows, you know, I didn't see anyone in this film that was truly happy or at least they were happy with their family, but they weren't happy with what this career was doing to their family. You know, so who was your favorite character, Gabriel, or your favorite person? I should say from the film. Um, Storyline. Definitely. I think uh, Foley's storyline was very just crucial to the film. Mm -hmm. And it's one, I think that encapsulated a lot. I had a pleasure speaking to another documentarian um vlad yudin he did a uh, generation iron and recently <laughs> the hurt business and it follows the same kind of themes that um you know beyond the mat is following in that you know what there is this part of uh you know the glory and you know the money and the fame and the attention and everything that goes along with the show but then there's also the reality that like well you're putting yourself through some kind of danger you know yeah the outcome is planned but the blood is for real in wrestling that's obviously you know besides the how to put the bells and whistles that's the biggest difference obviously from MMA but um just the fact that these guys go through that and you see Mick like okay his family how does it affect him his health Mm -hmm. but then all the attention he gets and that high that's just unlike anything else I think that was just a great part of the film and I think was portrayed very well. Mick Foley was my favorite storyline um, and just watching him watch back his own family, watch him yeah. right. like go through this wrestling match with uh, The Rock is just, and him his reaction to that, the first reacts video I've ever seen mm-hmm. um, right. is just heartbreaking because he's like, I feel like I'm a bad dad and yeah. he just, I thought that was an interesting moment like that he one that he couldn't see while it was happening obviously mm-hmm. but like reflecting on back after um and i think that's important for people to do in general in life mm-hmm. reflecting on certain things and in through a different lens mm-hmm. like now i'm part of the audience and watching what's happening mm-hmm. and i just really liked that and i like that he was kind of like i think i should probably not be doing this much anymore right so. I think it was just a very authentic and genuine reaction Mm -hmm. and maybe not one he likes to think about because when you're putting your body through that, you got to commit to giving a good show. Whereas when you're watching that, it can make you doubt like, well, what am I doing, you know, to my kids when they know that this is happening to me every week, you know? So I think that was very, you know, telling for everyone involved. And then I also would love to see, you know, it's almost we're getting close to almost 20 years of this movie being out. Mm -hmm. This would be the perfect time to like do another one or follow up with those characters and Mm -hmm. have new characters. Mm -hmm. Um, What would we call that movie? 
beyond the mat. Further again. beyond the mat. <laughs> Further <laughs> beyond the mat. Beyond the yoga mat. All these men are retired and they are now I in teach a hot yoga. yoga studio together. That be, that's yeah. what I told my roommate I was watching this. Uh-huh. And um, they were like, wait, is that about yoga? And I was like, no, nah, it's about like professional wrestling. It was super funny. So that, that would be lovely. Yoga. Imagine all those old men just like <laughs> in child's pose together. Uh, namaste. Warrior, warrior pose. <laughs> Nama- namaste. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be really great. Oh, that's funny. But I want to see it. I think it would be a, a be interesting great. look. All the perfect. commentators are just mm-hmm. very quietly commentating in the back. <laughs> And as they descend <laughs> into tree pose, th- uh, that'd be great. Like all these old, just huge buff men, just quietly talking about yoga. <laughs> and he's descending into tripod. That was incredible, Jake. Did you see? Excuse me. Did you see? The intensity. Um, that would be great. Nice. Let's do it. Let's produce it. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's move on it. to our next film so we started right. with warrior we did mm-hmm. we went to films about a fighter so we went yeah. to um the fighter the fighter as well as beyond the mat mm-hmm. from the fighter we're gonna have you go first okay gabriel do you want to talk about what's your link and what are your two films you brought today well definitely just another you know main character just famous boxer and um i did want to avoid rocky because i feel like you know what it's so overdone and i think mm-hmm. that as great as it is, you got to, you know, the best films are those that really focus on the family. And actually went with the recent one, Hands of Stone, oh. with Edgar Ramirez, who is the story of Roberto Duran, you know, Manos de Piedras, literally Hands of Stone. That's mm-hmm. where the name gets its title. And I think that that film, similar to a Warrior and The Fighter, just great job focusing on the family the peripheral characters involved with um, Roberto mm-hmm. Duran's career so he's known obviously um, fighter from Panama and this is at a time when you know there's a lot of political unrest they were trying to get the canal for trade and that political temperature at the time is really expressed in the film you go into his early career where you know he couldn't afford to go to school that's how he started with boxing to make money his trainer essentially got him out of like a jail and told him hey you know what i'll train you but if you ever get into trouble i'm gonna send you right back and that's Mm -hmm. something that they portrayed in the film they the little stuff his relationship with his wife from a different um essentially tax bracket and that relationship and i think the film was just so important because you know what i feel like it's a story everyone knows they did obviously get into you know He's famous for essentially in a fight with the great Sugar Ray Leonard. He quit essentially in the rematch and it became this big thing, no mas. And now anytime uh, any athlete or actor or yes, even fighters like somehow don't come out to continue the fight. Everyone calls it no mas. Like he said, no more. He quit. And for a great fighter with a great story, it became the defining part of his career. And I think the film does a great job. Yes, they you know, everything that went into that moment, but also why that can't be just the defining story of this just amazing journey in the history of the sport. You know, he's a guy who was just very famous at the time when obviously had Sugar Ray, you know, Hagler and Hearns, obviously of that generation. Mm-hmm. So I think that um, having a film like that and just recent, I think it's important because you have to have these stories to show the growth of the sport And another thing, the choreography, if you guys watch it, the boxing scenes, you know, they're actually very sparing throughout the film. Mm -hmm. But when they're done, they had Usher Raymond as Sugar Ray Leonard, which is very crazy to see if you when you see him with the wig making getting out. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Anyway, um, like I said, I'm not used to the mic. That's okay. But yeah, so this is how we learn. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I feel like I'm holding my little cup of coffee. I know. know, But I want to know. I have a quick question. Um, Do you know when this came out? Was this like a few years ago? Okay, so this year. Sweet. This year, yeah. Is it available Uh, already on like Netflix or Apple TV? I I believe so. I know I um, found it on demand, and usually by then, everything Netflix and Apple TV, they usually have it. So Mm -hmm. I would encourage, you know fans and movie fans it's a greatly well done film to check out yeah it uh, mature audiences by the way okay yeah Yeah. lots of blood Uh, you know what Uh, more some nudity there you know they do show the relationship with his wife yeah and that got us like 
I didn't expect it to go there, but okay. When, when you had said about like she's in a different tax bracket, I immediately yeah. thought Gabriel and I take a class and right. our teacher <laughs> you know, always <laughs> talks about how you should only mate within your tax bracket because oh. otherwise that causes problems for you. Um, and so I wanted to pass that along to people to remind them to mate within their tax bracket. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Here's the thing. You gotta, it's about who you love in your heart. You know, <laughs> like, are you really going to care about sure. how much money is in their wallet? Like, I, I mean, if my if... husband went with that, I probably wouldn't be here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so... my, my thing is, look, you know, if you want to be there when I own the Rolls Royce, you got to be there when I can't afford to get guac at Chipotle. Just there saying it like it is. There you go. Did you know Chipotle sells margaritas? What is happening in front some, of my face right now? Some locations, I think. I don't think it's all locations, Dang. but mine down the street does, and I'm very thankful. I know well, where I'm going for lunch there. this yeah. season. <laughs> I know what we're thankful. doing after this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What nice. is the other movie that you? Uh, the second as well? film, you know, I had to honor the obviously the great Muhammad Ali. He recently passed away, and what better than Ali, the film yes. starring Will Smith, and um. For a lot of the similar reasons as um, Hands of Stone, just the boxing, yes, it's all part of that world. They do a great job. I know Will Smith was really committed to that role also. And, you know, honoring the great Muhammad Ali and said, look, I want to know, is the champ okay with how I portrayed him? Is the champ all right with it? And I think that says a lot about, you know, the commitment and the respect he had for the role. Mm -hmm. So um, once again, you know, the story, he had an amazing career. They follow essentially just during his time boxing, you know, so being drafted into the army, refusing to go, going to jail, losing the title, getting it back. And, you know, all those familiar moments that fans are familiar with. Yes, they portray him. I thought it was very well done. For the same reason with Hands of Stone, again, you know, the unrest. So they obviously portray his relationship with Malcolm X, the racial tensions of the time. All of that, they just do a great job showing you the temperature, but always bringing it right back to this amazing man's story. And I think Will did a great job on yeah. um, the boxing scenes. Very well choreographed. It's a story you had to see to believe, but the boxing film did a great job in just honoring that and having a very respectable performance of portraying those iconic moments. Um, I'm going to need some help from the chat. Maybe you guys know, uh, has Will Smith won an Oscar? No, no, no. he's, he's, he's been, been nominated, nominated yeah. plenty of times. I know for sure for the pursuit of happiness, yeah, probably yes, for sure. Ali as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but has he won an Oscar? He has not. Oh, oh, Randall says, how does Smith not have an Oscar at this point? Right. Seriously, like people complain about Leonardo DiCaprio. And I'm like, guys, what about Will Smith, man? Like, what is up? You know what? Like, he is great. I, I he has know. some misses. He has some misses. He has some misses. Yeah. I don't look at him and think that's an Oscar winning actor. I know he I that's because you think of Fresh yeah. Prince of Bel Air. Well, no, I, I think of more of him as an action star because that's yes. what he was for a long sure. time. Mm -hmm. And now he's the dad who is trying to get his kids in films. And I know he was just oh. dead shocked. He actually did a great job in Suicide Squad, I thought. Yes. Yes. But I don't, I don't look at him and say, that is a great dramatic actor who brings powerhouse performances to everything. Agree. I don't think that. Mm. I think that when I look at Meryl Streep, I think that when I look at Christian Bale, I think you got to see six Melissa degrees Leo, of separation. Yeah, no, like he six played, degrees he of plays a, Yeah, he yes. plays a, a gay man in that movie and he's like a prostitute or something. Right? Um, or? I don't know if that's the same movie that I saw. I don't know. But <laughs> he's I've definitely, seen it, but that's he's definitely a swindler. Seven Pounds was also seven another pounds. one that I thought was oh, very yeah, good dramatic. Good. Yeah, I was trying to think of that. But yeah, I agree. It's like he's so much known for the action star. It's hard to right. see the fresh pints and the men in black guy and be like Oscar winner. It's like, it's just he's a, a hard the Wild Wild make. West. Yes, that's I actually wild, liked Wild Wild West. Wild West. I, yeah. I know there's a lot of problems. You're wrong. With film, but I was seven. <laughs> I was seven when it came out. And to you know me, what you got to do? It was really entertaining. You know what you got to do? You got to watch The Death of Superman Lives, the documentary. <laughs> the Death of mm -hmm. Superman Lives, What Happened, mm -hmm. uh, directed by John Schnepp. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to watch that. And then you realize how Wild Wild West is a complete shit show because <laughs> no, they stopped doing that movie and started doing Wild Wild West. Mm -hmm. I see. All right. Uh, <laughs> there's the um, uh, Kevin Smith talks a lot about Wild Wild West. And one of the producers of Wild Wild West, he had to work with whenever he was going to work on yes. uh, Death of Superman. And um, 
I think, um, what was it? There's an episode of how does this get made about wild, wild west and Kevin yes. Smith is a guest on that. And talks oh, about I got to listen. Then, I got to listen. So from that, now I understand why wild, wild west is a piece of shit, but I'm saying when I was seven, <laughs> of course, it was movie. lit. Yeah, it was lit. I was like, <laughs> dang, they got big spiders. Okay. Okay. I was all about it. And I love the song. I did a tap dance to the song. We did a well, big Well, that's a good number. song. So <laughs> no, it is a co- I really history. appreciate Will Smith's <laughs> Dude, songs and so how he samples. Wild, wild, yeah. uh, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. All right. Okay. Uh, and I do got to say this. I think he had think a reason wild, to be wild. have a gripe over not getting a nod or a nomination for concussion, too. That was a great yeah. performance. Mm-hmm. Wait, didn't yeah. that come out this year? That was I that thought, was this I year, thought right? it just made the 15, cut. I, uh, I thought they, it had just made okay. the cut. Okay, and okay. They, that's why, you know, it's like, you know what? That was a good performance. I can get that, but you know, someone's got to be left out. That's true. Yeah. There are so many great indie films this year. There's going to be so many people left There's out. So many, uh, so many for, good ones. for awards, and I'm kind of sad about it. Yeah. So that's all. That's my piece about this year. Okay. And people are like, "Oh, 2006 sucks," Oops. or "2016 sucks," and I say to you, friends, you need to be looking closer smaller films because yes. you're just your eyes are only open to the media and the bus ads and all that crap that's being thrown at you and the television commercials go ahead and follow IndieWire on uh twitter. on twitter, twitter and mm-hmm. you are gonna we find understand. some of the best films of this year for sure Watch i haven't witch. even seen all the best films this year i haven't, haven't seen, seen the witch it's fucking that great, is, is great. Okay. okay okay anyways mm-hmm. I gotta Tangent. stop watching fights and go, you know, yeah. to the movies. <laughs> some real movies, no, right. some real movies, babe. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we are going to link off of uh, Beyond the Mat, yep. Stacy and I. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the well, king. Our, oh, our, our link? link is uh, documentary movies. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting with The King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, which came out February 28th, 2008. Um, it is listed as a 2007 film, so I'm assuming kind of similar. Like came out 2007, but was released. 2008. Um, this is about diehard gamers compete to break world records on classic arcade games. So why it's the King of Kong is because they're playing Donkey Kong. Uh, this is directed and the narrative is written by uh, Seth Gordon. And I will totally get everyone's name butchered mm-hmm. on this one. But Steve Weeb is what I would say is the challenger. Billy Mitchell is Described in the film as the world's best gamer. We also have Walter Day, who's the founder of Twin Galaxies, uh, and some other people. There's uh, Roy Schultz, who is, or whatever, who is Mr. Awesome, and he's Billy Mitchell's nemesis in this movie. What I like is how he kind of tries to create this narrative of, like, here's the good guy, here's the bad guy. But really, they, like... When they watched it, they're like, "But we're not really enemies. <laughs> like, we're not really. We don't really care. <laughs> like, we're for, kind of friends." Mm-hmm. Um, but they kind of spin it that way, so it yeah. looks like, "Oh man, Billy kind of sucks, and we should <laughs> boot root for this guy." Mm-hmm. But I get why they do that. And the director said to them, "Like, you're gonna see it way differently than it is in real life." And mm-hmm. the reason I do that is because seeing how it really is isn't entertaining, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to spin it, mm-hmm. like. This is, I didn't make anything up for this, Mm -hmm. but I'm presenting it differently. Right. So that way people will want to watch it. And they did watch it and they liked it. And I am looking at buying a Donkey Kong dress that's on Etsy. And I really would like to do that. You but it's kind to. of expensive. So I was like, oh. But yeah. dresses are your, movie themes, dresses are your thing. This is right. a video game, though. I but know, but it's a movie about video that's games. That's 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 so. yeah. She has <laughs> met all of her, now her, her signature, you know, um, look is a. <laughs> My is signature a, look. A nerd, and I'm doing nerd in, in quotes here, nerd themed dress of some sort. Whether it's Game it's of Thrones usually. or Harry Potter or video games or Marvel or something like that. It is true. Something it is true. that's topics that we as moviegoers love. She has a dress to that theme. And mm-hmm. I just talk about the mummy a lot. But yeah. you, that's your thing. And so if you, that's your thing, you got to go for it, brother. You got to go for it. That's right. I do. Maybe for Christmas, I'll buy it for myself. Um, sure. This film appeared on several critics' top 10 lists of the best of 2007. Like I said, it like officially released in 2008, but was made in 2007. Um, it was fourth for Dennis Harvey of Variety, uh, tied with Gone Baby Gone. It was fifth for Empire, 
sixth for Noel Murray of the AV Club, seventh for Mike Russell of the Oregonian, and tenth for Peter Hurtlob of San Francisco Chronicle. Um, I also know that um, I, I can't even think of who it was at this time, but um, Ebert like was said it was a really good documentary as well. Okay. And that's all. And on May 5th, 2016, a little update, little update. Wes Copeland live streamed a score of 1,218,000. The significance of this score is that Copeland was able to make it to the final barrel board on his first man, making it a perfect game. Whoa. This surpassed his original goal of 1,200,000 by a large margin. Afterwards, Copeland announced his retirement from competition. No shit, I would retire if I had a perfect yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good like, on you. It's like George said on Seinfeld, leave the party on a high note. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> leave it while you And then he's like, I'm out. I was I'm that. out. <laughs> See, I feel like if I ever bowled like a 300 game, I'd never feel like going bowling yeah, again. It's like, I'm it. not going to top it. Why would yeah, I want to, you know, disappoint myself? Nothing left to do. You've exactly. conquered it all. You've conquered it all. Exactly. So there you go. King of Kong. Fistful yeah, of quarters. Fistful of quarters. I That's think it's great because when you look at the emergence of esports, I mean, people laugh yes, at it. It's like, oh, it's a bunch of guys just hanging out in mom's basement. They're selling out Madison Square Garden, the Staples Center. Yep. They're making. I went to you know, an esports thousands. competition. It was great. Yeah, and it's like you know what? People laugh. It is a whole business, and those guys make bank they're, on they're it. They're making money, honey. Yeah. they're making money. I ain't laughing at it. Yeah, characters <laughs> like PewDiePie out there, and just people he made benefiting 10 on Twitch. Ten million dollars a year, PewDiePie. Yeah. that's crazy. He was on. I wonder like what Conan. he does with that money because he lives in like what Sweden. I don't he know lives, where he lives. Yeah, he lives in like. <laughs> I would too. I would just live in like a normal, you know, just kind of yeah. nice, moderate home. But you have millions to, you know, disperse. You can buy all the games you want. And what's Go crazy, Dave and Buster's as much as you want. I don't <laughs> He's know not what harassed I, I either. They did a bio on him. They're like, they followed him through the street, and it's like nobody stops He's him because so they only know his voice. But <laughs> right, they, yeah. he never does a video interview, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like that must be nice. But yeah, I mean, shoot, I wish I played PlayStation more when I was a kid. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. Okay, so my documentary that I have brought uh, is one of my favorite documentaries that I've ever seen, especially of uh, the past few years. If you love movies, especially if you love bad movies of the 70s and 80s, you have got to watch a documentary. It's streaming on Netflix right now. I'm not joking when I say that I watch it like, like at least once a week. It's super fascinating. It's called mm -hmm. Electric Boogaloo, The Wild Untold Story of Canon Films. Uh, basically, the documentary is about Menachem Golan and Yoram Globus, who were two movie-obsessed cousins from Israel, whose passion for cinema changed the way movies were made and marketed, and the tale of how this passion ultimately led to the demise of the company they built together. Mm -hmm. So if you look at incredible films like Death, with, Death Wish 3 and uh, Masters of the Universe and like Superman Quest for Peace and um there there are so many incredible didn't they do over the top they did over the top yeah they Sylvester yes Sloan 25 million dollars <laughs> to do <laughs> over the top uh they were just incredible movie fans you know they loved film they loved american movies and so they started making movies in Israel. They became the kings of Hollywood over there, mm. uh, made a ton of money from this one film called Lemon Popsicle. So they took all that. I mean, they made like hundreds of millions of dollars. To this day, it's the number one movie in Israel ever, of, you know, of all its profits. Number one shown. Three million people live in uh, Israel, I think. And um, uh, 1.5 million people saw it at the movie theater. So that's, that's oh. pretty crazy. Um, so... They took that money, took that success, and said, we're going to start a production company in America. We are going to make American movies. They loved, um, you know, Rambo. They loved the, the action movies of the 70s and 80s. They loved that entire persona in, in old Hollywood especially. And so they wanted that kind of success for themselves. So they started this company. And the way that indie films are marketed and produced today they created that entire system. They would make up a film. They, would, they wouldn't even have a script for it. They would just have the concept. They would have someone draw up a poster and they would go and sell this movie, the concept of this movie to a distributor and say, we're going to make this film. This is the idea. These are the stars. That distributor would then give them money to make the film. And then they would sell the foreign rights to that and get all the profit from that 
just barely enough to make the next film and the next and the next. And so this is how keep we, it going, keep yeah, it churning keep, out, just keep it churning, keep it going. They would like make a thousand and one nights. <laughs> yeah, they would make hundreds of movies a year, like or like 70, 80 movies in one year when most studios would only produce five or six. So the way that indie films are produced and financed today, they created that system. They created that market. And yes, it eventually failed because they tried to get too big. They tried to do like Super Wing Quest for Peace. That was supposed to be this huge movie. And they ended up going um, way over budget and they had to cut it. And the special effects looked terrible. Mm. And it, it kind of bombed and they all, it kind of imploded on itself. But how they started out is how they became successful. And it's still going on today. They taught, and everyone that, worked for that production company like all the little guys they ended up starting um uh you know like the starting a bunch of production companies that are still going on today and still Mm -hmm. making great films that are nominated for oscars all the time so they really they shook up the industry and it they have all the actors and producers that were a part of those terrible films they're interviewed here um they interviewed uh there's one called like Bolero or something and they're interviewing Bo Derek and they they have so many incredible uh incredible guest appearances in this film and all these wild stories and they were just these crazy guys and they just I mean no one in Hollywood was like them no producers were like them and they just took that passion and that salesmanship and that drive from being foreigners being outsiders and just I mean, blazed a trail through Hollywood. It is an absolutely incredible film. I can't, can't, can't emphasize enough how incredible it is. If you love movies, you will love this documentary and love a look at how they're made. It's just, it blew my mind when yeah. I saw it. I've watched it's it on my of list. Times. I wanted to watch it last yeah. night. There's something going on. I think maybe I might be like sick because I cannot like stay up past like 10 anymore. Me either. I'm getting old. And uh, by the time I get my kids to sleep, by the time like they're done and I have like a half an hour before I like, I'm dead. It's Mm -hmm. time to go to bed, Mm -hmm. which is, has not been like, normally I'm a little bit better. Like Mm -hmm. I can actually get stuff done. But for some reason, I was like, maybe something's happening on the inside that I don't know maybe, about. Maybe, maybe. symptoms maybe. are just parenthood. Or parenthood. Be, or I'm yeah. just like, dude, I'm done with this month. Like, right. December is the worst month of my life every mm. year. I'm like, oh, this is, this is it. This is when I die. Mm. <laughs> like, right. not by my own hand, but just by being run to the ground. It's like, <laughs> all right, got to make it. No moss. <laughs> but I do. No I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I no, want to see it. It's got to see it's it. It's solid, um, like hour and a half documentary. It just, it's, <laughs> it's perfectly. <laughs> I didn't even finish Judge Dredd from the other night. Star Drew. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm still halfway through it. I'm going to, I'm going to get there. Baby steps. Gonna get kids. there. Baby, Baby steps. steps. Uh, yeah, it's a solid watch. It starts <laughs> off great and strong, ends with heart. Uh, and it's, 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 it's just incredible. I can't talk about it enough. I've watched and most of the time when you watch a documentary, you're like, okay, I'm good. I know, you know, I saw mm-hmm. what it is. All right, good. I've watched this over and over and over again. And I still am entertained by it. Even though I know it's a documentary, I know what's coming. I've seen it before. I still rewatch it all the time. It's so incredible. I loved nice. it. Mm-hmm, well, you can sure. find new things every time. That's, yes. Yeah. That's why you rewatch movies just in yeah. general. Why you all right. Things you so like. we went from Warrior. Mm-hmm. And then we went to movies that have a professional fighter as the, not like actual professional fighter, but you know, is, is playing a professional fighter Mm -hmm. as the main character Mm -hmm. and a standalone film. We went to, uh, the fighter as well as beyond the mat off of the fighter. Gabriel went to other movies with that feature Mm -hmm. fighting with hands of stone, then Ollie, of course. Mm -hmm. And then off of beyond the mat, Stacy and I went to documentary films. I did the King of Kong. And I did Electric Boogaloo, The Wild Untold Story of Canon Films. So there you go. Those are our seven films. Now we are going to do what's called movie link tweets. Ooh. What I do is I tweet out um, off of our first link. I said, what is your favorite standalone movie where the main character is a professional fighter? And then I have you guys tweet back at me with your favorites. And then I read them off here. Um, we're getting a lot more now. Mm-hmm. Oh. We've had a boost in like followers and bro- nice. boost in subscribers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I will read as much as I can and then I will stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay. there you go. Um, but I also want to say thank you to Ben Bellevue who puts this together for us um, because I uh, have so much that I need to do that it's nice to have someone take a little part of it. 
So for people that like Raging Bull, we have AV1138, Rene Carbajo, and Norwegian Blue. For Warrior, we have Brennan, Randall Sands, TJ Dex, and Jen Sturger. Um, for Red Belt, we have Joe Star. What up, Joe Star? Vision Quest, Travis Green, Enter the Dragon, Toby Doe, The Fighter, Travis Woldowski, Bloodsport, Ben McElroy, and Jack Shipley. Fat City, Andy Best, The Wrestler, Michael Rickey, The Good Boxer, mm -hmm. Stephen Malofsky, Gladiator, Dustin Jacobs, Pulp Fiction. Okay. Wonka um, the Saint. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. okay. Southpaw, Kobe Rosenthal, um, and Rebel Onyx Mashin. Mm -hmm. The Setup, HF, DSP, and Mortal Kombat, Albert Duong. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there you go. Those are our movie link tweets. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. We also always uh, connected back to Kevin Bacon because of yes, course fixed reviews of Kevin Bacon. We have to celebrate <laughs> him. Uh, Kevin Bacon was in Black Mass with Joel Edgerton, who was in Warrior. That's mm -hmm. another great performance by Joel Edgerton. Is I I really want to emphasize that like he truly is a great chameleon and artist, mm -hmm. and everyone should research his work. Like he, I'm very impressed by him. He is way more than his like bulky physicality. Just wanted to say that again. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, <clears throat> so now, now comes... <laughs> Gabriel, I don't know if you know about this segment in our show, but maybe oh, you do. You okay. may have seen an episode or two. Okay. Oh, this Rocky. is called Better with Rocky. Would Warrior be better with Sylvester Stallone as Rocky as I believe the principal in um, <laughs> Zito okay. in, in Warrior. And I'm going to already say yes, it would be better. But here we go. Stacey's going to do her Rocky impression. All oh, right. here we go. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> la, 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 la. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get this straight. You want to use the auditorium to watch a suspended teacher engage in the activity he was suspended for? Yo, am I hearing this correctly? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very Golf well done. Uh... Very well done. <laughs> I, I could not do that. It's... Uh, Honestly, it's a struggle every week, and I continue to do it and come back to it and fail miserably each time to do a correct Rocky impression. But you know what? I'm, it's like I'm a pro wrestler. It's just like me on the mat. I keep coming back for more. I keep coming back for the glory and the glitz and the glamour, <laughs> and then I just go back to my hotel room and take a shower and do some crack, just there like you. Jake the Snake. So. There you go. Yep. Did you sure. say and do some crack? Yeah. He does <laughs> crack and I the other does. <laughs> Yes. All right. Thank you for joining us, Gabriel. Where can everyone find you? No, thank you. Um, you know what? Everyone can follow me on Twitter at double G on TV. Just spell out the word double and yeah, G on TV, Gabriel Gonzalez on TV. And before I go, congratulations on 1700 subscribers. That's Woo! amazing. Yay. Well, yeah, yeah, I saw that in the show and I'm like, you know what? That's cool. You guys got a great show. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for oh, coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming, thank brother. You. Thank you. I appreciate Where it. Where can we find you, you Stacy? <laughs> Uh, you know what? You can find me on Twitter. Wait, I feel like I should do like a wrestling announcer. Ooh. You can find me every day on Twitter at S.O. Howard 2012 <laughs> and Instagram at Stacey O. Howard, brother. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. That was like Hulk. All right, all right. I like it. Mm -hmm. Where can we find you, Miss? So then should I do it the other way where it's like the, the build, the build? Yeah. You can find me trying to get all of these ornaments to no longer be broken so they can get on my Christmas tree. Oh my God! <laughs> Let's and get on ready Twitter. to rumble. <laughs> At his movies. Okay. Oh. There you go. There it is. Thanks all for joining us, and thank you for joining us in the chat. We love you, chat. Hey, uh, hey let's go through it. Let's go through it. Mary Elephant, Stephen Malowski, Eric Monroe, Jesus Live, What's Jose, What's that? Danilo, What? Star <laughs> Drew, What? And some other Who's people. I don't know. Some other people. <laughs> all right, guys. We and Randall Sands. We will see you next time, Jack Shipley. Bye, 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 bye. bye, 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 b